So this morning, somehow, like me, you woke up and got yourself, and maybe your kids and your partner, here to church. Maybe you dragged your kids out of your, their beds, or you, you dragged your partner's nose out of the Sunday morning newspaper that they were reading on their iPad. You said no to a bunch of other things to be here this morning. Why? No, really, why? Yeah. Okay, maybe some other reasons than that. So if you have any other reasons, I want you to keep those in mind as I tell you an ancient parable of the woman who was changed by a jump rope. In a city far away lived a woman in her early 20s. Her life was pretty much as you'd expect for a woman at this stage in her life. She had a job, she went to work, she had friends. She certainly didn't go to church, but I mean, that's no surprise. How many people in this room right now are in their 20s? <laughs> Anyone? Now I know you're all looking at me like, Otto, you're in your 20s, aren't you? Yeah, just got to tell you, my 20s are way behind me. I turned 30 on my last birthday, so. <laughs> it was like a year ago, don't, it's not. <laughs> not a reason to clap. But back to the parable. So, uh, you know what else this woman did, other than going to her job and hanging out with her friends? She also went to the gym. I hear that's where people in their 20s like to hang out. And when this woman was at the gym, she did a variety of exercises like you do at the gym, gym, I'm told. She lifted weights and worked out on the exercise machines and did other things. And, and at the gym, sometimes she used the jump ropes. And so one day, she started thinking about how maybe she wanted to use a jump rope at home. And so she came up with a plan. Instead of buying a jump rope, which she could easily have afforded for like $3 at Target, she decided to steal one from her gym. So on that day, she went to the gym and she did her workout routine like she always does. And, and then she went to the locker room and she changed and she went back into the gym and she looked around and she made sure nobody was watching. And she picked up a jump rope and put it in her bag and booked it out of there. Now, of course, we can't all do this. I think it's important to note that the woman in this story is white and of course, Nobody was expecting that she'd be stealing a jump rope. So she just walked out of there and nobody bothered her. Not all people have this luxury. But at this gym, this young white woman in her 20s was able to do that. But it didn't take long for her to realize what she'd done. Almost immediately, the guilt and the shame sunk in. She knew she had done something wrong. But what she didn't know was what to do about it. Now, I want you to think about this. Have you ever felt the same? Have you ever done something and immediately regretted it? Knew that it was wrong? I know I have. Sometimes it's something small, like I sent an email to a friend that was maybe a little mean. Or I didn't help out someone when they told me they needed a hand, even though I easily could have. Or I looked the other way when Family Promise asked for volunteers. That's the shelter that's coming to stay with us tonight. And sometimes it's something much bigger than that. Can you think of something? If you're like me, you can think of many things. And I want you to keep those in mind as I continue this story. So this woman, who we'll call Jen because that's her name, did not use the jump rope when she got home. In fact, she looked at the jump rope and, and it gave her so much guilt that she boxed it up and put it on a shelf and tried to forget about it. And if, if it would have been me, I would have used it. But not Jen. On the shelf, it stayed for five years when she came across it as she was packing up her stuff to move to a new city. And as she opened the jump box, the jump rope, in the box, the film, familiar feelings of, of shame and guilt returned. And if it had been me, I would have just thrown the jump rope out at this point. But not Jen. She packed it up and moved it with her. And then it survived several more moves until it had been 10 years that she had been carrying this jump rope around. Can you imagine? Seriously, I don't get it. 
And she said to me, because yes, the woman in this ancient parable is a friend of mine, she said to me, every time I looked at the jump rope, my guilt just got worse. And, I, and do I ever know that feeling? That feeling, there it is, there's the, that thing that I did, that thing that I did wrong, and what am I going to do? I don't know what to do. For me, it lodges itself in my stomach, and I can feel it right here, and I want to push it away and forget about it. Or maybe I think that there's something, I've got, I've got to be able to do something about this, but, but what? But what was there for her to do? It had been 10 years. What could she do now? She can't go back in time and not steal it. Was she de destined to just carry it around for the rest of her life? Now, Jen is not a Unitarian Universalist yet. Don't worry, I'm working on it. <laughs> and at this point in her life, she wasn't going to church or any other religious community until she found herself at a Buddhist retreat. Now, I don't know exactly how she ended up there, but it was there that she first heard the five precepts, the practices of Theravadan Buddhist practice. Perhaps you're familiar with them. Number one, I undertake the training rule to abstain from killing. Number two, I undertake the training rule to abstain from taking what is not given. So there it is, the second one. Right, so it's clear she had taken something that was not given to her 10 years ago when she walked out of that gym with a jump rope. A clear violation of the second training rule. And 10 years ago, she knew that it was wrong. But upon hearing this precept, this training rule, she decided that she had to do something about it. Finally. So she, so she went home, she dug up the jump rope, she put it in a manila envelope, and she mailed it back to the gym in the city that she had, that it, where it had belonged to. And during those 10 years, she had not told a single soul this story. And a few years later, she was on a first date, and she happened to tell the man she was on a date with, kind of on a whim. He thought it was interesting, and I have him to thank for the fact that this story eventually made its way to me, where upon hearing it, I exclaimed, can I make a sermon out of that? In retrospect, maybe not the best response. <laughs> so why am I telling you this story? There are a lot of things that this story brought up for me. The guilt and the shame that she carried around. The question of what led her to steal this jump rope in the first place. The silence around it. The fact that she didn't just use the jump rope like I would have. Or gotten rid of it. And there was, there's a way in which the physical manifestation of this misdeed, this very concrete metaphor for the guilt and the shame that we all carry around for the things that we've done. And the way that she mails it back and is able to sort of let go is really compelling. If only all of the acts that we've done, all of the ways in which we've wronged others, had such simple and clear solutions. So remember earlier when I asked you to think about something that you'd done or maybe something that you didn't do, that you should have, that you wanted to change. So spoiler alert, I don't have a clear solution for you on that. But that doesn't mean that you can't think about it. You see, the, the thing that really sticks with me about this story was the way in which her community, her religious community, helped her to see something that she already knew which re reiterates an important question to me. What is the purpose of religious community? Why do we come to church? You see, on her own, Jen knew what she had done was wrong. She knew that she should not have taken that jump rope. But it was hearing this precept not to take it, not to take what wasn't given to her, to actually do something about it. She needed this outside prompting, this religious community, to help her to figure out what to do. In 10 years after having stolen the jump rope, this is how she was changed. Nathan, our senior minister, sometimes says that we come to church to practice being our best selves, to practice being the people that we want to be. But what does that mean? We all have this internal sense, right, of, of what's right and wrong. And I think we can all relate to Jen when she took the jump rope, that immediate sense that we've done something we've regretted. We all have that sense in us. 
But our religious communities and our other communities as well can be places where we can test that out. Does my internal sense of what is right or wrong line up or not? They can stretch us and push us to do the right thing, even when it's difficult or hard, because other people are holding us accountable. It's not just about ourselves. Now, obviously, this doesn't mean that we blindly follow whatever our religious community tells us. That's why we need to find places where we can have some kind of meshing of those two, at least in part. But these two things, our own moral conscience and that of our communities, work together. And it can be our religious communities that actually compel us to take action. And, and I get it. This story that I told, this parable, is incredibly clear cut. She took something she shouldn't have. She knows she shouldn't have done it. She found a religion with a rule that literally said don't take things. And because she had the jump rope, she was able to do what in her mind seemed like the right thing. But what if it's not so clear? What if you have something in mind and you know you need to do something to make it right, but you don't know what it is? And maybe this is where you start to think Unitarian Universalism isn't so helpful. Sure, you could look at our seven principles. They're located in the first few pages of the hymnal, in case you want to brush up on them. You can look at those as an equivalent of these precepts, but they lack a certain decisiveness. We have the, we inher we have the fact that we, in we honor the inherent worth and dignity of every person, instead of, I undertake the training role to abstain from killing. We have justice, equity, and compassion in human relations instead of abstaining from taking what is not given to us. And these principles are almost deliberately abstract, which it can both be a blessing and a curse. There is nothing that tells us that we have to do something. But by choosing to come here to church this morning, what were you hoping for? Did you come here expecting to be challenged or comforted? Did you come here expecting to be changed? Maybe we come here for each other, to help each other, to guide each other, to be prophets in each other's lives. Maybe we come, each other, we come here to hold each other accountable to being our best selves. And we see examples of it here every day. We see people showing up for Family Promise as volunteers. We see the work that, that our racial justice transformation team is doing to try and inspire more open conversations about racism in our world and in this congregation. Just look at the Just Mercy book group discussion happening after church today. We see all of the people who volunteered during all of the memorial services we have, had, we have had here recently. And we see our offering plate go to causes that we care about each month, such as Richard Ortiz's appeal. If you've been coming here for a while, you can probably think of other ways, big or small, that you've changed. You've changed the way that you act because of this community. Because, my friend, the woman who was changed by a jump rope wasn't really changed by a jump rope. She was changed because she allowed herself to be open to a community and to let it hold her accountable to something that she already knew. After years of holding on to this problem on her own, she discovered that she wasn't alone and she let herself be changed. We can't come to church and expect not to be changed by this experience. We can't come to church and not let the resolve of our own minds mingle with that of this community. We can't come to church and expect to keep living exactly the same way we did before. A few weeks ago, many of you filled out forms talking about why you came to this church. And here are some of the answers. For purpose, hope, and inspiration. Because I'm okay, and I can do better. Challenge, in a good way. Opportunities to give, and to love, and to welcome. So this is what I'm telling you, you already know it. Let yourselves be compelled to be, do something that you've been avoiding, something that you know you need to do. Think about something right now that you could do to help become more of the person that you wanna be. Return the jump rope even if you think it's too late, even if you think it doesn't matter. Because this is where we practice being our best selves, together. Let us say together, Amen. Amen.